Hello, I'm Nick Curtis, the Evening Standard's Chief Theatre Critic. I'm in the Tower Penthouse at the world's first super boutique hotel on London's Leicester Square, The Londoner. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Sonia Friedman, OBE. Since 1990, Sonia Friedman Productions has developed, initiated and produced over 160 new productions and together they have won a staggering 58 Olivier Awards, including a record-breaking 14 at the 2014 Awards alone. Earlier this week, Sonia penned an article for The Telegraph about her fears for the future of the West End and warned that the theatre industry is facing an imminent catastrophe. Sonia, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Um, this is probably a bit of a hard question to go in on, but uh, it's been a terrible year for the sector. What's been the high point, if there is one, and the low point so far? Well, I think the low point is obvious, which is the complete uh, devastation and shutdown of our industry um, and the continued uncertainty. Um, and a particular low uh, was yesterday um, when the PM gave us another four week delay, but no certainty as to when we really can reopen. We're all hoping, you know, we're literally in a place where we just hope yes. that maybe uh, that next date is real. Yes. Uh, as far as a high, it's hard to think about it, to be honest. It's mm. hard. I think that probably the, the minor miracle of getting anything up yeah. to social distance houses, um, new work, new plays, anything, going this... into a theatre and just hearing, hearing... Um, uh, an audience respond, hearing laughter, even hearing mobile phones um, <laughs> yeah. uh, is amazing. Um, this is the re-emerge season at the Harold Pinter, uh, Harold Pinter Theatre that you did manage to get, have managed to get up and running. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about, I mean, it's, uh, it's three new plays. It's three new plays by three young playwrights, uh, debut for, uh, for, for them and uh, I wanted to do something for the younger generation. I wanted to create. I wanted to produce. Mm. When you've spent a year more dismantling, tearing apart, shutting down and putting people out of work, uh, you, you, there comes a point where you, you have to do something positive. Yes. And last year, in fact, it was last last summer, I thought that I would try and create a season of, of new work. It didn't happen because of, of, of the continued lockdown and shutdown. But the Arts Council heard my plea and, and it's the only way we've been able to actually financially do this is the Arts Council very, very generously and, and, and I, was, I was very, very grateful that they supported this season. They and we want to do what we can do to help repopulate our streets, help repopulate our theatres, start to rebuild confidence mm. with audiences, and for me, most importantly, give some sense of hope to the freelance community yes. that there is a future for them. Yes. So you're playing at 45% capacity in yes. there with social distancing? Is, yes, we, it, uh, or that's what it's you're an 800 seat theatre, but once you take into account the bubbles, and there are a lot of singles, yes. we actually can't really get beyond 45%. And the, the second play is opening next week, Juvere. Um, the first one, Walden, has been running. How's it been going? Well, Walden finished on Saturday night, and we played to 90% of that 45%. It was an absolute joy to do. Uh, we had a couple of bumps along the way, had a cancelled show because of a track and trace issue. It's, it was just wonderful. It was wonderful to have an audience come to see new work, to celebrate theatre and to support the industry. Mm, yes. I mean, I think um, a lot of some people possibly look at commercial West End theatre and, and uh, asking for help from the government and don't really understand or think, why should we help out those people? Why should public money be spent on those people? But I think the point is surely that um, it's an important, it's not just, it's an important cultural part of our lives, but it's also an important economic part of central London life. Wouldn't that be true? British theatre, London theatre is the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm not arguing. Uh, just, just, that, that's just a fact. Yes. Uh, we feed every other entertainment industry. You, you turn on Netflix, you look at the movies, you look at television. It starts in theatre. Yes. The commercial side of theatre um, is the biggest economic driver in, 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 in the art sector. We uh, are responsible for 80% of all box office revenues. We are responsible for 70, 70 plus percent of the employment of the entire workforce. And we are uh, a massive tourism driver. Mm. Uh, we're number two after heritage for the reason why um, people want to come to this country. Yes. It's to see our theatre. Um, and that's, that's, that, that's extraordinary, but it's also not extraordinary because I, I, you know, kn knowing how, ex how brilliant our work is, the f massive frustration we've had, and all of us working in, in the commercial stroke independent, I prefer to call it independent sector, yes, yes. Um, is that the, the, the government has yet to understand the commercial, economic, cultural and, and um, social impact we have across this land and indeed globally. We have failed to get their attention as to why we matter mm. in the way that the subsidised sector has succeeded. I was very, very much part of the lobbying for the yes. Cultural Recovery Fund. The irony is, is that, that um, I've been left out, I and my colleagues, um, and uh, we are fighting, still fighting very, very hard for um, some government-backed insurance scheme. We are being asked to reopen. We're being expected to reopen. To, it's gonna, the, the reinvestment to restart our industry, and for my company alone, is over 10 million just mm. on the shows that I had to shut down. And to restart, we can only do this once. We yes. can restart once. And, and, and I'm very, very alarmed about what will happen if we restart and then have to get shut down again, yes. which is very, very possible. So don't give us a date unless it's real. And don't give us a date um, that can then be reversed because that will, that will be devastating and and. I think, irreversible for our, for, for our sector. Is this affecting the timeline of your planned timeline for reopening shows, the bigger shows like Book of Mormon, Harry Potter? I, I, I made a decision to go as late as I possibly could. Yes. So with, with agreement with the theatre owners, I, I've gone much later in the year. Because I was um, being more cautious mm. and I was more concerned about our ability to not just, not just reopen, but to build the advances. When these shows cost the, the amount they do, and when you've got 85 people backstage, for example, on Harry Potter, and, and 60 plus on, on Book of Mormon, and it costs so much to restart, you have to build up those advances. The West End has been decimated. Mm. All our box office advances have, have been blown apart, um, and we're all starting from zero. Yes. Um, so, that's going to take time and it will take it takes between 16 to 20 weeks to build up those advances to get back into rehearsals mm. um, to restart those engines yes. um, and so yes I, I I went later albeit I do have Leopoldstadt the 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 Tom Stoppard play it's meant to be going into rehearsals in a couple of weeks right so that's that's quite uh, worrying. And that's quite a, I mean, that's a, that's a big important play in the West End with a large cast written by an 87 year old author, I believe. Is, he's is not, he 87? He's not there not, yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, no, Beg no, your pardon, not, sorry, not, Tom, not stop quite, hard. Tom. No, no. He's, he's in his mid 80s. Um, yeah, there's 45 backstage on that show yes. um, in, in, in the wonderful Wyndham's Theatre, but, but it's, 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 you know, it's pretty crammed. Yes. Um, and and the, the economics of that show are we have to play to 80% mm. minimum. I to suppose, just break even. Yes. I suppose we've, uh, we've all got very, because so many vast sums have been banded around all year in every sector, we've all got sort of hung up on the economics of things, but there is a, um, a sort of moral case for theatre or a sort of emotional one, isn't there, really? I mean, I think a lot of people got through the last few years watching James Graham dramas on Netflix or watching 
stories, basically. Are there, do you sense people are hungry to come back for that sort of thing? Uh, well, undoubtedly. I, they, the, the, we, you know, theatre will never die. Mm -hmm. we, we need to commune. <clears throat> we need to come together. We need to, to share stories. We need to understand what we've been through. We need to, um, th you know, we, we need to celebrate. We need to reflect. We need to sing. Yes. Um, and, and that we've been prevented as, as an industry from doing that very frontline work that w we so desperately wanted to do during times of crisis, which we were able to do during war, uh, recession, depression, um, terrorism. What we do is we, we give people an escape. Mm. We give people two, three hours to just turn off the news or... or we give people two or three hours to think about the world we're in yes. and to ask questions of ourselves. Um, we won't necessarily be able to give the answers, but, but yes, we, we are an absolutely essential um, service for the mental well-being mm. of our country. I think there may even be something about having a communal experience with people you don't actually know. You know, I think there's something important about going into a room full of strangers and having a shared experience, well, which I, mean, I think lockdown has really deprived people. Com completely. I mean, be be before the pandemic, um, uh, you, 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 you knew that, that you know, being in a theatre, sharing an experience, the person next to you, you know, laughing away or crying impacted you mm. on, on your own experience. Yes. Um, going out going afterwards having a cup having a drink talking about that experience yeah i mean it, it, netflix tv films of which i've done my fair share of in fact i've got a, a, a big bbc drama coming out on on thursday night you know i've 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 used this time to do other stuff mm. um it's not it's never it's never the same as being in that space together yeah. even if the show doesn't work but you know, it, um, it, it, it just just going through that experience um, and and thinking about the world in a slightly different way. And the best theatre um, can make you can change you and can change the way you think about um, society. Can change the way you think about your 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 your, your fellow um, humans and humankind and. Uh, We've, we've been deprived of telling stories, mm. be it literal stories or metaphorical stories. We've been deprived of that. Yes. And that is, is been very, very damaging mm. to our soul and to the soul of this country. Is there any, uh, do you think there will be any positives to take out of this period? I mean, a lot of people have been talking about great art coming out of great strife. I think so. The, um, yeah, look, I, 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 I've got sitting on my desk uh, several extraordinary pieces of work mm. as a response uh, to this moment. Uh, I, I also think that having having our industry shut down for what will be a year and a half, probably if if, if not longer, um, who knows? Uh, it's it's been the moment where I think most of the country, maybe not the government, but most of the country, has appreciated what we are, mm. what we give back um, in every sense. And we are a big, big, big loss to any community. Take, take the West End away from London. Our streets are, you know, they're pretty empty. Mm. Take your local theatre away in the regions. You've lost that hub. Yes. And we are, we are, I'm sorry to bang on about the, the, the financial impact, mm. but you also take that away and you've taken away the ecosystem around it. You've taken away the, the, the restaurants, the bars, um, the hotels, e e the taxi drivers, everything, everything around yes. it. Every, exactly, the babysitter. Mm. You know, this, this huge ecosystem. Um, take theatre out and it unravels. It's a, it's a beautiful, complex tapestry mm. which theatre is the centre of we are that thread and you take that thread out and the whole thing collapses yes um i know there's been stories about a lot of people leaving the profession i was talking to andrew lloyd webber earlier this year who said he was fairly confident that the actors and musicians will come back but was worried about the technicians the lighting mm. um lighting leasing companies things like that um are you worried about the people who've left the, I'm oh, very obviously worried. You're worried about the people who left the profession, i'm very sorry. i'm very worried but, about uh, we, we, it's happening right now mm. uh people who we have uh, furloughed 
um, are, are leaving the industry to go into telly mm. um, and film because the telly and film um, are over are so busy. Yes. Um, and indeed, many TV um, technicians are going abroad. So, so we're losing our our real um, skilled workforce to go into telly and film. And so we're going. That that's that's a real a real problem that we're facing. And we're going to have to train up new people. And but something like Harry Potter, which takes weeks and weeks mm. of training. Um, it's such a complex show, yeah. technically. Uh, you can't just you know, walk in off the street and, and have one day's training. It, it takes weeks. And, we've, and we are losing some of those, those skilled workers. And if it's happening to me across several of my shows, it must be happening to, to, to all the industry. Yes, yes. I think but I don't blame them. Why, you know, I, if, if, you, if you're getting the opportunity in, in, in other media and, and we can't guarantee them work at the moment, of course they're going to go. Mm, yes. Is there any sort of opportunity here to make the industry more inclusive? That, you know, if vast numbers have left the profession, are there, can we have a new... I think, I think that, look, I think that is a positive. Excluded that groups, is absolutely... Yes. Uh, one of the positives that's come out of the last year is, is as, as, a, as an industry, and certainly me personally, you've reflected on... Um, uh, on all aspects of inclusion, equity and diversity. Mm. And we definitely, as a company, are using this time to focus on that, both here in the UK and in America, um, to uh, create training and also find new job opportunities for people um, who otherwise wouldn't have been aware of... Of, of, of the roles and we're trying to make it more visible but you do have to start in education mm. I, I you know I think about when did I know when did I learn about theatre and the theatre opportunities it was when I was a kid um, so you've and, and that's when I decided I wanted to work in theatre yes. so so we it, it, it will take many many years to do the the whole scale change mm. but we are absolutely got to start now yes yes are you sensing the sort of stuff that's coming over your desk now? Are you sensing a change in the stuff that's being written? Are people submitting do me COVID plays to you or are they submitting uh, cheerful entertainments that... Uh... Actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's the full gamut. Mm. Um, I mean, what's... The, 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 it's definitely more politically focused, mm. uh, but not necessarily about now. Yes. Um, I think I, there, there's, there's a lot of plays looking back on... Several, several years ago, if not decades ago, and trying to piece it together as to how we've ended up mm. where we are now. Um, uh, but, but I got one, called it COVID play, by, by Dennis Kelly, right. uh, which is the one that's actually ended up going on television. Oh, um, yes. It's on BBC on Thursday night, which Stephen Daldry directed, which we were going to do in a theatre, but we couldn't do that. Right, yes, which I saw some of them, which I, well, I haven't seen the full thing yet, but Together. I think it's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. I interviewed Sharon Horgan for it, so... Uh, so you did, yes. Yes, yes. she's yeah. remarkable. She is remarkable, yeah. and Dennis they, they Kelly both, is remarkable. Well, actually, it's, it, was, it, was a, 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 it was a quite remarkable experience, and... Um, you know, and, and uh, whilst I'm not going to go and work full time in telly, it's certainly, you know, you talk about people leaving the industry. Yes. It's opened my eyes to a, to, to a different industry. Yes. And about necessity being the mother of invention as well. That, that was shot, I think, under going. 11 days, wasn't we, it, yes, in a house? That's right. Um, we, we turned it around incredibly fast. It, we, we, in fact, we haven't even completed the edit. And it's, what day is it now? Tuesday. And right. that goes out on Thursday. Right. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is, a, I suppose, a, it's a, a, a silly question, but I mean, imagine that um, all these troubles are far behind us. We're a year further down, and um, the West End has, has thrived again and is in full bloom. What would you be? Your, what would be your ambition to produce in that atmosphere? Honestly, Nick, I, ca I can't think that far. Yeah. My, 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 I would, I will just be. Um, I'm just focusing on getting open. Yes. Actually, and, and that my ambition right now is just to make sure the industry, and particularly our sector, opens and stays open and is sustainable, and that we have audience, enough audiences hmm. to, to, to keep it 
sustainable. Yes. So thinking two years, three years down the line, um, of course I'm, I'm developing loads. I mean, uh, as a producer, I'm always developing. Mm. But I, I, I can't allow myself to think about two years because I have to focus on, on the next few months and, yes. and genuinely survival. Survival for the show's survival for our industry. Yes. I'm ashamed to say until I read your Telegraph article, I hadn't realised you'd opened Harry Potter in Australia in the middle of a... Yeah, we opened, we opened Harry Potter in February. Mm. Um, the, the Australian um, local Victorian government supported us, uh, encouraged us to, to reopen because they, they, they knew, they know how important um, theatre is uh, to their local economy and to the well-being um, of their community um, so they encouraged us to open I was I was I was nervous I was skeptical uh, but but they encouraged us to do so and it was fantastic it was fantastic until two weeks ago mm. when uh, the Delta variant um, seeped in uh, to Melbourne and they locked us down yes um, and we are now um, we're basically locked down for we don't know how long they, they, they have reopened some venues, but to 25% capacity uh, or, or a cap of 50 people, mm. which obviously for us is, is, is shut down. Which for sure that's Yeah, and, in, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, just to, just to give some numbers to this, mm. that, that is, that is a, a loss of $250,000 a week. It yes. is costing us to be shut down. Yes. The government at the moment is covering that, but for how much longer, I have no idea. But, but... Multiply that across the West End. Yes. Multiply that across Broadway. Multiply that across the country. That's yes. why I'm worried. Yes, and across the world, you're right, I suppose. International tours, everything. Yeah. There's, I think what a lot of people didn't, uh, possibly didn't fully understand was everyone thinks that production can be turned on and off like a tap. But, of course, once you stop everything worldwide, yeah, everything I mean, has to be started up one at a time, often using a core production team, doesn't it? Or, you know, yes, a I core mean, management team. <laughs> I mean, w w w one, of the, one of the problems you've got, particularly with shows which, which ha have, have, have multiple productions, is, is the staff to actually restart them. Because never in the, never in the history of theatre mm. have you had to have multiple shows all reopening at the same time. Yes. So here in the West End, and of course the, across the commercial, uh, the the, the subsidised and the and the independent and the fringe, you've got I don't know I haven't even counted. You probably know upwards of a hundred shows trying all trying to reopen of various scales. Yes. Um, at the same within the same six eight week period. Yes. It's it's unthinkable, and and it's that same workforce that we need to put those shows back on. And so the, 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 it's, 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 it's like um, a war plan mm. in our office. Yes. Trying to figure out who's going to be where, when, how. Obviously, you've got, you've got directors and associates and designers working on other shows as well. And so you're having to negotiate with other shows about when you can, can't reopen. Because, because we've been shut down for so long, we effectively are, are starting again. Yes. We have to go back into rehearsals. Mm. Um, uh, and in many cases, you know, we're reworking the show. We may have to recast many people. We certainly will have to, to, to um, find new associates because it, it, it's, it's, it's a massive, massive operation. And it goes, the ripples go sort of far and far out, don't they? I, I was talking to a German wig maker who, worked for, who works for Cameron Mackintosh and does the wigs for Phantom and for most of his shows internationally, I think certainly, Miss Saigon and a couple of the others in multiple countries. Suddenly his work dropped to zero. Then if you suddenly have to recreate all those wigs again yes. from scratch, it's... With, uh, with, with almost, you know, yes. a, few we, a few weeks' notice, yes. hopefully, yes. Um, and and that to go back to what I was saying, you know, we we, we can only do that once because yes. that wig maker will be making wigs for for particular actors, uh, and that's a cost. Yes. That, that that if if you get shut down again, those actors may then may leave, and you have to recast, and then off you go go again. Yes. Yes, you have this problem. I was talking to Jamie Lloyd, the director, about uh, the Seagull, which was on the point of opening before the first lockdown. Um, 
And he was saying it was it was pretty much finished. Even if you could get all those actors together now, it wouldn't be the same show. You know, it would be entirely different in texture yes. and in context. And also, it would have a everybody's awareness of a, of a, of a 14, 16-month lockdown informing it as well. Correct. I mean, that's really, really hard if you've created a piece of work pre-pandemic. Um, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're an artist, you're going to want to know how that work is going to respond to the time you've just been through. Mm. As it happens, I think Chekhov is, is, is uh, almost perfect um, writer to respond to this work because no one better than Chekhov writes about desperation and isolation yes. um, and loneliness. Um, but, you know, I lost 25 productions yes. March the 16th last year. Um, and, and so for 12, 14, 16 weeks, it, 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 it was an, an unbelievable shock just watching these shows go boom, 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 you know, mm. just, just tumbling across the world. Yes. Um, and then and then having to postpone and suspend and keep remodeling and keep remodeling, it's it drives you insane, um, and it's 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 very 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 hard to keep going like yes. that. And that's why we have to have certainty now. We cannot keep doing this. We have to stop this madness. Yes. So we need certainty of dates. We need insurance. We need certainty. We need certainty of dates. And we need enough lead time to build the audience and to get into rehearsals. And we absolutely have to have insurance. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming along on a very difficult day, Sonia. I really appreciate your time and your candour. And oh, I thanks. hope we look forward to better times. Thank you, Nick. Thank you.